Professor, I want to delve deeper into the world of AI with you. When we're talking about what platforms and tools like ChatGPT and Google Bard can do, and a lot of these language learning models are capable of, the concern for the everyday consumer is, as they delve deeper and start using some of these tools, is that will this eventually replace me? And the million dollar question is, will it take away jobs? I know there's a whole theory uh, that you can uh, propound to us uh, very well, which is all about technological unemployment. Is that now, 2023, the year where we should be concerned about technological unemployment? Uh I would say it's quite likely that we'll see a uh, significant impact. I'll just give a couple of examples. Um, so mm. one actually is in the area of computer programming. Uh, and you might find it surprising that advances in technology are going to make computer programmers redundant. Um, but the numbers I've seen suggest that using these tools, you can write software um, five to ten times faster uh, than unaided. Um, and in many cases, uh, you simply say what you want the program to do, uh, and uh, the software just writes it for you. And mm -hmm. that means, it's to me, it's unlikely that the world needs five or ten times as much software. Uh, so that means that we're going to need somewhat fewer computer programmers. Um, but I was also talking to a member of um, the Writers Guild, uh, which in the U.S., uh, is the sort of union for all the people who write uh, screenplays for movies and television shows and so on. Uh, and they are in panic mode because, um, because these systems can, can generate scripts uh, at very high speed. Um, and if they've been trained on all the scripts for all the soap operas that have ever been produced, uh, they can write new soap operas uh, extremely fast. And I don't think anyone expects soap operas to be, you know, mm -hmm. literary masterpieces uh, with amazing originality. So uh, so I think a lot of writers are going to find themselves uh, in less demand as these systems get uh, more and more capable. So that's that's just two examples. But I think the idea that um, that a whole job Right. If you if you think of a person who works in a company as sort of a node in a network, and you think of what what comes into that node? Well, it's language, right? It's emails, mm -hmm. it's phone calls from the boss, it's requests from customers. What goes out? Well, it's language, right? It's documents, you know, sales invoices and and reports for the boss and all that kind of thing. It's all language. Um, so any one of those jobs in principle could be replaced, but we don't trust those jobs to psychotic six-year-olds who live in a fantasy world. So unless you're a psychotic six-year-old who lives in a fantasy world, I don't think your whole job is immediately at risk. We can't trust these systems to tell the truth because they hallucinate things that don't exist and uh, they just want to sound plausible and they have no idea what's true and false so if, if you're an insurance broker right you're not going to be replaced by a system that's that is quite happy to sell insurance policies for houses on pluto uh mm -hmm. you know for five cents each right and and you can't trust these systems to follow policy to mm -hmm. understand your products and so on but i can tell you there are literally thousands of companies who are working mm -hmm. to fix those problems, who are working to make these systems conform to policies, to f stick to the facts, uh, and so that they can be used in these important applications. And so that next generation, I think, will have uh, a much bigger impact on employment. If you like the video, do like, comment, share, and subscribe.